Welcome back everyone, I'm Robin from This Vlogs Neat and I am recording this video from my lab. Uh, this is at a distillery that will remain a mystery for right now. But what I'm working on is actually tasting a whiskey that's going through its maturation process and I am determining whether or not it is done maturing or needs more time. Now, the distillery that I'm at uses their own proprietary rapid maturation process, and rapid maturation is used in a number of other distilleries and is widely used in the home distiller community. But this video is not about rapid maturation. This is about my version of sensory analysis and how I approach tasting spirits as they are maturing. So if you are a home distiller or if you're someone who picked up some white spirit at the liquor store and are attempting to mature it yourself, I hope that this video is helpful for you and gives you insights into how to determine when your spirit, whatever it may be, is done maturing. So when maturing a spirit, you can only go forward in time, right? You can't go back in time. So if it is not ready yet, you just let it sit for longer. There is no rewinding the clock and going back to a time when you think it tasted better. So you do have to make a judgment call as you're going. It is possible to mature a spirit for too long, right? Over oak a spirit. It's kind of easy to do when you are a home distiller and you are maturing your own spirit using wood chips or using heat or using vibration or some rapid maturation techniques that you found on the home distiller forums. So hopefully this video is going to help you to kind of figure out when you've reached your sweet spot and not gone too far. So yeah, let me give you my approach. So what I am tasting right now is a whiskey. And I've done a video on how to properly taste, but I'm going to reiterate everything right now here anyways. Um, but what you start with is the nose. So I have a Glen Karen glass here, which is perfect for nosing spirits. Now, some people use Glen Karens that have stems attached to them. I prefer, especially because it's freezing in here, as you can see, I'm in a puffy. I prefer Glen Karens because this will allow me to actually cup my spirit, my whiskey, um, and warm it up a little bit more. Um, especially if I'm struggling with picking up aromas on the nose. But let's start with the nose. So I'm going to gently approach the glass and start with short inhales and then slowly start to increase the length of the inhale. And the first thing that you'll notice is if there's heat or not. Is it hot on the nose? Does it actually smell like alcohol? Are you getting that feeling in your nose that there's alcohol in the glass? If so, that is a negative attribute. And a trick to mitigating that heat a little bit is parting your lips. But luckily this whiskey has no heat on the nose. And now I'm just gonna take my time and I'm going to identify as many aromas as I can. Now, as I'm doing so, I'll switch between nostrils. And you'll notice that your nostrils have almost different sensitivities. Like my left nostril picks up sweeter notes. Whereas my right nostril will get more like earthy notes. So I will write down just all of the aromas that I'm picking up and then I'll start to assess them. Now, since this is a product that is going to be bottled, I know that I am working off of a standard. I know what it should smell like. I know what notes I should be getting. So I'm going to compare this directly to a batch that is my standard. So some things that I consider when I am scoring the aroma is whether it's one note or complex, 
Are the aromas good <laughs> or do I not enjoy them? Um, are they in profile or are they not? Now, if this is your first time maturing a spirit and it's your first batch, great. You just get to decide what the standard is. You get to say, yep, this is good. I really enjoy this. And you can judge the aromas based on the complexity that you're getting in the nose. So once I've written down all my tasting notes and kind of given a rough score to the heat that I'm getting on the nose and a rough score to the aromas, I will compare it directly to the standard. And then I will go in for a sip. Now, when you're taking your first sip, you wanna take a teeny tiny sip that's just small enough to fully coat your tongue. And then I'm gonna leave this in my mouth until any heat has dissipated. And I'm gonna move it front, back, side to side, even underneath. And I will not cut this. So you'll get to see how long that I keep the sip in my mouth before swallowing. Now, after you swallow the sip, smacking your lips and rubbing your tongue on the roof of your mouth really helps with retronasal olfaction. This is getting, imagine, the aromas and the flavors that are trapped on your tongue to make their way back behind your sinuses and to your olfactory bulb right up here, your olfactory epithelium. The first thing you'll notice as soon as the sip hits your mouth is whether or not there's heat. If there's heat, it's a negative attribute. However, if this is something that's sitting at cask strength, you have to be mindful of how much heat you're actually going to get and how much heat you should expect. Lingering heat, also a negative attribute. If it kind of starts low and then whooshes in, negative attribute. Um, but if the heat is not too bad or there is no heat, great. Again, if it's cast strength and the heat is pretty low, like that's also a great thing. Um, you'll notice while the sip is in your mouth, the texture of the spirit. This whiskey for me had a nice creamy mouthfeel. It was nice and coating and there wasn't any drying. So if it is drying, it's either astringent or tannic. The tannic sensation is related to the tannins that are extracted from the oak whereas the astringency is more of a feeling. But either way, if it is doing any drying sensation, that to me is a negative attribute. However, this doesn't have any of that, and it has a nice creamy texture. So a nice creamy texture is a positive attribute. If it stays pretty thin, for me, that's a negative attribute. I'll also pay attention to the flavors and just as I did for the aroma, I will try to write down all of the flavors that I'm getting on the palette. I'll try to identify as many as I can in that first sip. If it is bitter at all and excessively bitter, that is a negative attribute. However, a little bit of bitter is nice, especially if it's balanced with some sweetness. And of course, I'm going to score this based on the flavors. Is it one noted again? Or is it complex? Is it too bitter? Is it too sweet? Is it not balanced? Or does it feel balanced? Is it in profile? Does it match the batch that I'm trying to get it to taste like or not? These are all going to factor into my scoring system and my scoring system makes sense to only me <laughs> uh, because I came up with it. So come up with your own scoring system. Mine 
ranges from negative 12 up to nine. So yeah, it's a weird scoring system, but it works for me. For me, this was almost ready, almost done maturing. So there wasn't any heat on the nose. I thought the aromas were really nice and within profile. I thought the texture was really nice and there was a little bit of bitterness, but it was balanced by some nice sweet notes. There wasn't any astringency or a tannic aspect to this. And again, the flavors were nice and within profile. So for me, this was nearly done maturing. It needs a little bit more time because I was picking up some heat on the palate that needs to be hopefully edged off with a little bit more time. So just to reiterate, as I do sensory analysis for a spirit, I am writing down all of the aromas that I'm getting on the nose and all of the flavors that I'm getting on the palate, and then I'm trying to break that down. And then I'm assessing those aromas and those flavors. Are they good? Are they bad? Are they complex? Or are they one-noted? So if, as you're tasting your spirit, it has any negative attributes, such as heat or bitterness on the palate, give it a little bit more time, taste it again, and see if that has edged off at all. Now, if you're tasting your spirit for the first time and everything tastes great, and there's no heat, and there's no astringency or no bitterness, then that's amazing. Uh, as long as you really like the aromas and the flavors and you think that everything tastes balanced and you enjoy it, it is ready to be pulled out of the barrel or <laughs> take that wood piece out or take those wood chips out. Now, each taster will have their own method for tasting and their own routine for tasting, so you will have to practice and develop that yourself. Even when it comes to identifying flavors and aromas, it really requires a lot of practice and just exposure. Some tasters are much more particular and are looking at a lot more attributes, but for me, this kind of sums up exactly what I'm looking for in a spirit to be ready to be bottled or if it needs to continue to mature. I know some tasters in the morning won't even brush their teeth. They'll like almost wash their mouth out with whatever product that they're tasting that morning. Um, I allow myself coffee. Some tasters won't even allow themselves coffee. And for me, I'm usually doing very few batches at a time. So as far as palate fatigue goes, I don't usually hit that, especially now I'm just working on one batch and one product. So I don't really have to worry about palate fatigue. But if you are tasting a handful of barrels that are maturing, you're gonna have to worry about palate fatigue and trying to mitigate that. So again, that goes with uh, not swallowing your sip when you're tasting and a lot of tasters will proof their spirits down to at or below 20% ABV. They'll nose at the bottling strength, but then when it comes to tasting, they'll proof that down. Now for me, I do not add water to proof it down any further than the bottling strength and that's personal preference. And again, as I said, I'm usually dealing with smaller batches and fewer batches, so I don't have to worry about that extreme palate fatigue. And again, if you are a home distiller or you're just getting a white spirit from the store and you're trying to mature it yourself, because you don't have a ton of different products that you're working with or a ton of different batches that you're working with, you can also taste it at strength. If this is your first time maturing a spirit and you're trying to figure out when it's done or when it needs more time, I hope this video was really helpful. And as you do this more and more, you'll gather more experience and be able to come up with your own method. Before I go, I wanna give a huge shout out to the Patreons. Thank you guys so much for helping to support the channel. And if you, the viewer, would also like to support the channel, I've got a link in the description below where you can join our neat community. Now, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, let me know. Uh, please make sure to subscribe and share this video with your friends. 
Don't forget to like the video as well. And let me know if you have any questions at all about the things that I've addressed in this video.